if if u is not continuous, uh, then this actually doesn't work, right? I mean, how do you take derivative of u a discontinuous function with respect to x at the point of discontinuity? All of this actually breaks down, right? We cannot do this analysis. We are not even officially allowed to write this differential equation, right? So, I mean, we have been studying this class is called the partial differential equation. So, uh, what do we do? So, it turns out what we do is actually we have to, in some sense, abandon the notion of differential equations and go back to where these equations are derived from. So nonlinear conservation laws are called a conservation laws for a particular reason, is that there is a mechanical way to derive these type of equations from a physical conservation law. So what is a physical conservation law? Okay, a physical conservation law, for example, conservation of mass, says that, okay, so let's imagine we have this room here. The total mass in the room has to be conserved. What does that mean? I mean, what does that mean if, let's say, somebody just uh, walks into the classroom? What does it mean by, by the mass in the room is conserved? Right, so, so the mass in the room, it doesn't have to stay constant if somebody walks in and out, right? But the conservation means that if somebody walks in, the mass has to increase. If somebody walks out, and the mass has to decrease. And the increase or decrease has to be equal to the amount of mass that walks in uh, minus the amount of mass that goes out. So, it's uh, conservation law from a physical perspective is written as a, not as a point value problem, but as a, as a domain, a volume problem. You have to first define the control volume. So, define and if you have a conservation law, the law should work regardless of what control volume you choose, right? So a, conserva a conservation law written in physical terms is for any control volume omega, so let's say this is a control volume, okay? The amount of mass that is increased or decreased over time, so we write it in derivative terms. So integrated, uh, let's say u is the amount of mass per unit volume, dv, right? So this gives my total mass inside this control volume omega. Uh, this gives my total mass, and we are taking the time derivative of the total mass. It's equal to what? Yes, it's equal to influx minus outflux, right? Influx uh, minus outflux. So let me just uh, think of outflux as minus negative influx. So this is equal to influx uh, through the boundary. And let me call the boundary as partial omega. That's usually the mathematical notation for a boundary of a, continu uh, of a, of a contiguous volume. And you can write the influx as a boundary integral. So that's the assumption deriving these uh, conservation laws. So, so the assumption is you can write the influx through, the influx can only happen in the boundary. And the, you can write the influx as an integral of the boundary of a flux function, which is usually a vector because the flux is, has, a, has a sign. Uh, because we want to look at the influx, we multiply by the minus n, which is the, I mean, n is usually the outward normal, right, uh, of a volume. So minus n is the inward normal. I, because I want influx, I want to take the flux dotted with the inward normal times dA. So this is usually how I represent a conservation law in physical terms. I mean, that's mass conservation, you can write it this way. Uh, Momentum conservation, you can write it in this way, except you also need to add a body force term on the right-hand side, right? Um, gravity or whatever. And the energy conservation can also be written in such a way, except for if you are restricting yourself to a particular type of energy, right, mechanical energy, for example, you need to add potential, body, uh, pot potential source terms 
that comes from the conversion of energy from other sources. Let's say if you're looking at fluid mechanics, uh, anything that burns in your control volume is going to give you more mechanical energy because it converts chemical energy into, uh, into a system. So, so there are potential source terms on the right-hand side. But let's uh, if we look, uh, okay, so, so source terms can be written as uh, uh, integrated over the same volume, let's say G times dV. So that's, that's right now the equation we have. Okay, so why can we, why, why is this equivalent to the conservation law, right, we had before? Why is this the same as du dt plus df? Uh, let me just uh, write it in the more general form. In the divergence of f uh, equal to g. So, so why is it the same as the conservation law we wrote before? If if you use differentiable, yes. You have a question or you have an answer? No. Okay. How, how do you how do you go back and forth between that? Yes. Yes, divergence theorem is the key we key theorem we want to apply. Because if you look at all these terms, they are all volume integrals, right? Except for this term. If we can convert this term also into a volume integral, that means we have an equation where every term in this equation is a volume integral and this holds true for any control volume. What does that mean? That means we can get rid of the volume integral and say we have a pointwise equality, right? That's what we do. So the derivation between, uh, between them is that use, use a divergence theorem That says integration over a surface uh, times n dA is equal to a volume integral of what? The divergence of f dV, right? So that's the divergence theorem. Applied to over here, uh, remember there is a minus sign here, so we move this to the left hand side. So we have d dt of integration of u dv plus integration divergence f dv equal to integration g dv. Because this has to be true for any omega, that gives me this equation. All right? But in the case of a shockwave, a discontinuity, this form no longer potentially no longer makes sense right maybe it still makes sense maybe the f is continuous despite of u being discontinuous but that is not generally the case generally the case is u is discontinuous f is also discontinuous so you cannot really look at the differential form and make any sense of out of it around the discontinuities you have to go back to the physics which we actually call it the integral form of a conservation law PDE.